nothing before you hear anything that's in the red. It's probably essential. I'm reading five minutes worth from Parting. Remind me. Chapter 1, Revelation. I will tell you my story. Surely the truth has some value. My bullet comes so close to the coyote's shoulder that it raises the hair on its back. It ears up, it cocks its head, looks straight at the three of us. Defiant, it holds fast. Then it runs and crawls under a chain link fence, a mysterious fence that appears to surround nothing but Kansas prairie with one silver antenna raising out of nowhere. Out of the ground sticks in a rounded metal dome. I don't see he's dropped below that little dip, Mr. Martin, our Boy Scout leader, continues to peer through his binoculars. He'll pop up in just a moment. If he comes back up to the left, you've got a second shot at him. If he comes back to the left, he whispers, he just might still be in range. Chris's eyes are sharp as a hawk, but that little dip's a heck of a distance. I know what we by the last snacks. What's inside the fence? Looking through his binoculars for the coyote to reemerge. Our scout leader says, it's abandoned. There's nobody in there. I know, because I built it. A slight wind blows in my eyes as I lay on my stomach, focusing on the bee, centering it in the bee of the sights of my rifle. I'm taking breaths very slowly, deliberately dropping my heart rate. Although the wind where we lay is blowing in our faces, I can see the tips of the spring grass moving to the right where my first shot went. The coyote comes back into my sights. It is that wind that I will compensate for. The coyote reappears on a low elevation, not to the left, but to the right, even further from us now. I raise the muzzle of my rifle, so slightly that only I can perceive the adjustment. I take three quarters of a breath and hold it, slowly squeeze the trigger, and take the shot. My gunshot takes more than two seconds to arch through the air. The bullet boils the air, leaving a trail unrecognizable to most. Both our scout leader with his binoculars and I can see the bullet. It goes right through the lungs and heart, then drops 15 feet behind the coyote. The canine falls from view. Both Levi and Mr. Martin stand, trying to see its carcass. As I quickly stand up, the blood drains from my head to my feet. Levi catches me. The realization that my natural skills, my hours of training, my shooting medals, my pride has boiled down to killing something just because I can it makes my stomach so hard that my digestion pushes back up through my throat, filling my mouth and nose. Although the foul taste stays, I swallow that back down, but I can't pull my bullet back. I've killed a living creature, and that just saves me. That's a shot in a thousand, our scout leader says. You couldn't do that again if your lives depended on it. Standing on my own and breathing normally, my pride makes me raise my rifle. I take aim and shoot inside the fence, this time at the elevated metal dome. Mr. Martin raises his glasses and sees the bullet ricochet off the dome metal hatch. I can see it bounce off the house, hatch, a bing. Clear sound of my gunshot hitting his heart comes back to the three of us. Eyes like a hawk, 